Okay, I'm gonna ask the classic question. Stop it. I'm gonna ask the question. Is math a bunch of steps? Yes. yes. Huh? No. First, give me your opinion. Okay. Is math a bunch of steps? Yes. yes. Okay. Now give me the right answer. Is math a bunch of steps? Yes. No. Yeah. No. If you say yes, you're wrong. You are dead. Dead. Wrong. You are just wrong. You're not different from me. You are wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong. I said if you think that math no. is a bunch of steps. I said no. So I was right. Okay? If you think it's a bunch of steps, well, you can't be wrong about what you think. So that's what you think. But if, you, if it is, if you're going to tell me that it is a bunch of steps, look it up anywhere legitimate. It will never say Okay. Now I can't blame you for wanting to make it a bunch of steps. Because what's easier, understanding something than a bunch of steps? Which is easier? A uh, bunch of steps. Cool. Okay. You're gonna re you're gonna represent a bunch of steps because you, you you spoke up first. I'm gonna, I'm gonna mark this down. It's a good thing. Uh, what is it, seven? Yes, it is. Thank you for your help. Okay, Dakota, you have one minute. Okay, I'm going to give you one minute. And you're going to uh, convince us all that making math a bunch of steps makes it easy. Okay, ready? Go. Go! Oh, um. Well, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Whoa. I mean, this. Whoa. I changed my answer after I thought about it. Your opinion is different? Yeah. That Wait. Understanding it is easier than a bunch of steps. Wait a minute, hold on. You're a terrible representative of <laughs> steps. Yeah, I know. Okay, I need another representative for a bunch of steps is easier. Okay, you ready? Uh, okay, go, yeah, a bunch okay. of steps is easier, go. Well, if you just like memorize it step by step, and then like you know like that equation, um, you can solve it just using the steps, but you don't actually have to think about why it's that way, you just go by the steps. It becomes like an example thing. That's it? There you go, you got 42 more seconds. That's like it, like a bowl. You're done. <laughs> okay, so, can I try? Mm -hmm. How about somebody else jump in? Somebody else want to jump in and, and be with Jenny and say, yeah, 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 that's right. Yeah, that's right. No, no, no. I mean, like, actually do it, new words. Oh. Any new well, words? Huh? Just Last class, we throw out a bunch of steps on how to graph it. Like, we know the steps to this, like, problem, but we don't know why. You don't need to know why. Exactly. Just do it. Just do it. It's your homework. Exactly. Just how it is. Just the steps. That's yeah. how those Babylonians yeah. did it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Time. You got me, I'm convinced. Kind of Forget know. anything I ever learned about math. I learned it all wrong. Good. I should have learned all the steps. That would have been a lot easier. Mm -hmm. You're what are the steps for this? What are the steps? That's common sense. Wait a minute. <laughs> so, <laughs> now, wait a minute. Who said it's common sense? <laughs> David? Who said it's common sense? Okay, it's common sense. David, I'm going to put a little mark here. Just for participating. You know, that's not your class. Why did David put a mark there? That would be your name. Okay. Uh, Alright, so it's common sense. What do you think I would say about, like, all the questions that I could ask you about graphs, what's a graph, what's a solution? Right? What do you think I would say about all that stuff? Common it's common freaking sense. Ooh. It makes <laughs> common sense. <laughs> okay? Why? Because you been doing it longer? I've yeah, been doing it longer. I got it a long time ago. Right? <clears throat> Honestly, probably not in high school. I probably didn't get it in high school. Okay? Didn't get it in college. That was quite a few years ago. Uh, 
And now it's like, yeah, that makes sense. That makes absolute common sense. Now you tell my daughter, who's three, that this is just common sense. No. What does she know about common sense? Does she have some common sense? No. Yeah. Oh. Song. <laughs> my daughter, I'm gonna write that down. <laughs> Um, what's what? I mean, really, what's what's common sense? Everything you want to do. Things that things you don't have to think about anymore. Things you're just Should just be patently obvious to everyone, right? Yeah. Like, like don't touch fire. The one I thought of. Don't touch fire. Now, wait a minute. Does my one and a half year old know that? Yeah. No, no. Well, maybe I should not. Has she touched fire before? Wait, hold on. I thought it was common sense. Well, she's one and a half. It's just obvious. She's a baby. She's a baby. You're making it hard. I'm making you think, which, like, yeah, it's not going to be. Can we just follow the steps? Can we just follow the steps? I'm trying to show you. What are the steps? What is this? What are the steps? You take three and add it to two. What does that mean? Exactly. It's common sense. You add three to two. Okay, so I'm just saying this one. Well, you got to know your numbers. Hey, look, 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 look. You just, you just add three to two, right? So for this, this problem right here, all you need to do is draw a picture a bunch of points that represent all the possible solutions so that we can get an idea of what the behavior of this function is. Okay, you just do that. What? You just do that. If I ask you to graph it, what is the big deal? That's all I'm asking you to do. Yeah. It's a big deal. There's no big deal. I don't want to do it. I should have been able to say that on day one. If it's such common sense. If this is common sense to you, and this is common sense to me. The first day, 5.1, let's call that day one. Polynomials get brought up. They say, look, this is a polynomial. You get it, right? Because y equals, and we got x's with powers and coefficients and all that kind of stuff. And we want to draw a picture of all the solutions. You don't understand what a solution is, right? I mean, that's common sense. And then I just want you to draw a picture. This picture will just be, let's say, we'll, we'll, we'll do the inputs on this axis and the outputs on this axis. OK, we'll agree to that. Uh, that's not really common sense. That's something we have to decide. But after we do that, if, if these are positive uh, inputs and these are negative out, uh, inputs and these are negative outputs and these are negative or uh, positive outputs, okay, if we agree to that, then all I want you to do is just draw a picture. Let's say a solution will be represented by a, a point, and uh, and I just want you to draw a picture of all the possible solutions using a, a point uh, with that given input and output, right? That it goes in that place, it goes in that coordinate, right? If I talk to my, my, a friend of mine who, who now lives in Canada and it has a, a doctorate in mathematics. If I tell him that, he's like, yeah, I don't even know what you're talking to. It's so easy. It's such common sense. Okay? And if I start to explain this to you, you're like, yeah, you add three to two. What's the big deal? Okay? But it's only common sense. It's only so easy because what? Because you've been doing it and you've really been doing it. You've been doing it genuinely and honestly. You've been adding three to two for real. You've really been doing it. Okay? You haven't been faking it. Right? <laughs> Have you been faking it? No. No. You've been really adding three to two. Do you break out your calculators because you don't know what three plus two is? No. No, you know what three plus two is. Okay? <laughs> Did you explain it to a, a, a fifth grader? Yeah. Explain it to a first grader? Yeah. No. Okay. Probably. Can you guarantee that they're going to pay attention and be like, yeah, I get it? No. Yeah. Well, that's, that goes with any teacher. <laughs> and I always have people who don't want to listen. So. so, trying to make a somewhat entertaining point that if, if you're trying to teach a first grader two plus three, they're like, okay, two cross three is five because, let's see, what, what steps could I memorize? Uh, three has a little curvy deal, uh, and then this has a little straight thing, so the little straight thing has connect them, right? Okay, so I'll remember those steps. 
I'll just take this thing and put it up there, and then this thing and put it right there, and so 2 plus 3 is 5. Okay, got it. Right? Steps. Right? Yeah. That's what I do. Okay. What I'm trying to get you to see is that a first grader does not understand the importance of knowing why 2 plus 3 is 5. Could you make a case for that, though? Could you make, you've got to know why 2 plus 3 is 5. Yeah. Can you make a case for it? No. Okay. Is it going to hold up for a first grader? Are they going to be like, oh, okay, sure. I'll do the thing that right now is difficult because you say so. Because you say it's important. I'm convinced. It's not going to work on everybody, right? But are you right? Yeah. You are right. That first reader is wrong. And you are right. Okay? But so you're saying we're wrong and you're right. I'm saying you are wrong. Oh my god. And I am right. I mean this. This is where you're wrong and I'm right. If you're making math a bunch of steps and you think that that's making it easier on yourself, it isn't. Just like these steps for 2 plus 3, not making it easier on anybody that learns 2 plus 3 is 5 for those reasons, because those steps work out. Okay? Uh, yeah. I give you reasons. Or I, I, I do give you steps because it's what the people want. People want steps. Right? And I, I, I give in from time to time and say, this is a situation that steps could be used, right? It is pretty standard for every situation we could use these steps, okay? But let's, let's go back and look at those steps, by the way, the steps that I gave you. Look at those steps. Uh, uh, There they are. Find the zeros slash x-intercepts and plot the x-intercepts. Notice that's a step. But think about the step that I chose to give you. Yeah. You make the step into something else. You make it. This, this is like the, the, the very far end of the spectrum. So you take that and you take it to mean that step says opposite of one is negative one. That's an x-intercept. Opposite of negative one is one, that's an x-intercept. Opposite of negative three is three, that's an x-intercept. Is it true? Yes. It's true. Is it what I asked you to do? Maybe. Maybe it is. is can I tell that that's no. what you're doing? Did you, did, no, it might be that the only thing that you know is to take the opposite of this number and put, go to the x-axis at that number and Dot. You see what I mean? That could be absolutely all that you know. Now, when I photograph something like this, that's exactly the same thing that I do. I look at it, I'm like, okay, negative one, one, three. Do I look at it that way because I only know that I'm supposed to use the opposites of those numbers? No. I hope not. You should fire me if that's what I'm doing. Okay? Why am I doing that? Why do I just take the opposites of all these numbers? Because they're the zeros. What's that? Mean? If you set that equation equal to zero and solved it. Okay, don't make it equal to f of x. Make it equal to zero. Well, each one. So like x plus one squared, if you uh, set that equal to zero. x plus one equals zero? x plus one squared. Okay, fair enough. Equals zero. Then you take the square root of each side. Square root, so then we get x plus one equals zero. And you minus one. Equals negative one. So that's why. Okay, why'd you do that? Because you have to set it equal to zero. Why? I don't know. So, better, right? Less steppy, but still steppy. Well, I tried. It is, it's yeah. good. It's better than this. Okay? And by better, I mean better for you. Alright? Um, Let me give you an example. Uh, um, one third plus.
plus five sevenths. I'm going to add those together. Those two fractions. Okay. Could you memorize the steps to get this done and not understand what you're doing, why you're doing it? Okay. I've seen people do it. I see people do it all the time. Okay. Uh, I won't go over how to add fractions. If you need help with adding fractions, I'd be just overjoyed. Sit down and help you understand. Understand why we do what we do when we add fractions together. Okay? Glad to do that. But when we get to, and we will, when we get to something like this, uh, we're going to add those two fractions together. But if you have done steps to memorize how to do this, like here's some steps you could follow. Uh, just take this number times that number. Right? But here's a, here's, a, here's even more step you did here. Just multiply, uh, yeah, multiply these together. You get 21. Right? That's gonna work, isn't it? Sure. Any any two fractions you can do that with. We may know that we need a lower common denominator to make our lives easier, but we don't have to have a lower common denominator to add two fractions together. Okay, so we multiply them together. There's your denominator, and then <coughs> let's see. Uh, well, then we'll multiply this number by that number, right? That's going to wind up being what we need to do. Seven, and then we'll multiply this by that number, right? Fifteen. Then we just add those numbers together. Excuse me. Add those numbers together. Uh, Twenty-two. 21, done. Is the answer right? Does this person have any idea what they're doing? Maybe, maybe not. I do, I just did it, right? I did it that way. I do know what I'm doing. I do know why it works, all right? And if I choose to, to make it a little shorter that way, uh, to save myself a little time, I can do that, right? It's not hurting anything because I know what I'm doing. Right. If you try to apply that here, mm, it'll work, right? But it's way over complicated, more complicated than it needs to be. And um, you still don't even know what the result is. Right? You're even more lost. You're a little lost when you don't really know what this means. You're way lost when you get the result here. It's more complicated than it needs to be, and you don't even know that, and uh, you just don't even know what it means. You have no idea what the result represents, what it is, okay? And like, I understand you're wanting to make math a bunch of steps. Because right now, right now, when you're learning how to add fractions, is it easier to be able to explain to me why you need to get common denominators, or is it easier to multiply this by that, then multiply this by that, this by that, add those two numbers together, which is easier right now? Number two. Number two is easier, it's much easier. Much, much easier, okay? But which is easier when it comes to this? I hope that you all believe that that would be easier, okay? Because well, you could multiply this by that, but if you've never taken the time to multiply polynomials together, you probably won't even do that correctly. Right? Um, but if you understand what multiplication means, then uh, maybe you could just pull it off. Like, well, I know what multiplication means, I know what place value means, I know that uh, if I'm gonna multiply these two things together, these two things are uh, a combination, this one's a combination of these two things, it's a combination of these three things, so it makes sense that I have to multiply everything here by everything here, okay? That's if you understand multiplication and place value and all those kinds of things. If you don't, and you've just memorized a bunch of steps, you probably won't do that. Okay. See what I'm saying? You know, I'm a pretty long-winded guy, and I can just talk about this all day long. 
there are times when the thing that you're trying to learn is very difficult to understand. And it's really attractive to make it into a bunch of steps that you also don't understand, but that you can follow. Right? I mean, there was a time when, when solving this equation was something you couldn't do. Even if we have to go back to first grade, but definitely you did not do that. Probably within this year, you did not know how to do this problem. And what I love to do when we learn math, when I teach math, is to build on your understanding and say, well, you know this? Oh, yeah, I'm doing. I know that. Well, hey, we could use that here. What if we did this? I don't know. Well, let's think about that. Oh, that's, that's cool. That works. You're right. If we, if we take the square root of this, I never really thought about it before, but yeah, square roots, I know that means it never times itself. Well, this is just a thing that's being multiplied by itself to get x plus 1 times itself. So that thing that you multiply by itself, you lose x plus 1 plus b. It's like it cancels out. Okay? Right there, there's a choice. Do I remember that it cancels out, or do I remember what it means to take the square root of something squared? Steps or understanding. Which do I choose? Okay. Hopefully understand. Okay. Never take the square root of zero. Oh, that's just zero. And hey, there was a time in history when you couldn't solve this equation. You didn't even know what this equation meant. All you knew was two plus three. How do I add one plus letter? Right? What does that mean? Okay. So what I'm saying to you is it is ultimately easier to learn right now what it all means. That later, you don't have to learn what it all meant back then and the steps to do this problem. See what I mean? So, though it's a bit hypocritical for me to say, because I'm a procrastinator for procrastinators, um, you, all you're doing by avoiding the understanding now is backloading your work in the future, okay? front loaded a little bit now. Like, deal with it. If, if you don't understand what a graph is, don't let yourself go another day without understanding what a graph is. What it means to graph an equation. If, you, if, if I say graph an equation, and those two things just seem magically linked, just by magic, not by reason, and link them by reason, okay? And ask me to help you with that. I'm glad to do that. What I'm not glad to do is, what do you do? First step, that kind of stuff. Sometimes I digresses that into that, but it's just not as good. Right? Um, you're not bad and you're not wrong for, for trying to use those steps, but if you are wrong, if you think it's easier for you, um, give that some thought. Think maybe in the past, have you ever tried to sidestep the work that seemed like you had to do right now? Does it seem easier? Oh, I got an idea. I'm trying to do some exercises in the mornings, okay? Some push-ups, some sit-ups, simple stuff, right? Now I realized uh, at one point that I could do a lot of sit-ups, a lot more than I thought, and then I, I realized, you know what I'm doing? I'm using the wrong muscles, right? What, what muscles are you supposed to use when you do sit-ups? Uh, abdominal muscles, okay? Can you use other muscles? Yeah, you, know, you can use your leg muscles, your back muscles, or you can completely avoid using your stomach muscles. Okay? And you can get, you do that motion, right? You sit up, don't you? Okay? But is it accomplish what you want to do accomplish? And if I'm doing sit-ups because I know it's it's good to, to have like some core strength and it actually helps your back and you don't injure your back as much and uh, you know all sorts of good benefits come out of that. And then it comes time for my abs to be useful, right? For whatever that I want to use them for, crushing walnuts or whatever. Um, <laughs> then they fail, right? They don't work the way that they're supposed to, because I wasn't ever challenging myself to do ten sit-ups and be breathless, because I don't do sit-ups that often. Okay, I'm confessing to you something real here to hopefully convince you to 
listen up, and, and learn this stuff, all right? Essentially embarrassing myself for your sake, okay? Um, so, if you do know these steps, hey, you know, that's great, because you can get it done, and you get the right answer, and you get good marks, and I like that stuff. I like the word marks, it's kind of British. <laughs> And, and if you're at that stage, hey, that's great. You know what you can do? You can go from the basement of learning where you memorize things uh, to the next level where you understand why something is working. Right? Uh, have any of you ever figured something out, solved a problem? Not a math problem, necessarily. Okay. Has anything ever been broken and fixed it? Or kind of fixed it? Yeah. It could be a physical thing, it could be a motor, it could be emotions or something like that. But to figure that out, to, to fix a thing that's broken, and this is kind of a thing that's broken right now, and we're going to fix it up. Uh, it, it takes knowing how that thing works. Like, you know, I'm going to fix my engine, I at least need to know how the part of my engine works that I'm trying to work on. Right? I fixed a, a kitchen scale the other day that my dad broke while he was visiting for Christmas. And uh, he's a very capable mechanical guy. He just didn't have time to really look at it and fix it. So I took it apart, and I, looked, I had to figure out exactly how does pushing down on this surface cause this needle to sweep around in a circle like this. Right? I had to figure all that out. All the pieces had fallen apart, and I put them back together in a way that caused that to happen. Now, but in the process of doing that, I stretched out some springs, and as well, but you know what? It wasn't working at all before. And I gained the understanding of like, some guy had designed, like, some guy designed this, this scale, and I like communed with that guy. He put it together, my dad broke it, and I fixed it. So like me and that guy that made the scale, we kind of understand each other now. Yep. We're comrades, we're buddies. Okay. Um, but I, I couldn't have fixed that scale if I just memorized how to fix some other scale, because that scale may not work the same as the scale. But I needed to an understanding of how things move and how things rotate and how the underlying, the basic, the building blocks. So what I'm asking you to understand now is not any different from what you were asked to understand the first time you drew a graph. But if you don't know what this graph is, what it represents, and why it takes the shape that it does. Uh, you can never learn what a graph was, even though it was years ago that you first saw a graph. You saw an equation, you saw a graph, you graphed it. Um, but if you never took the time to understand it, you still are in that place that you could today learn something new, not just that. Understand something. Okay? So, um, let me erase all this stuff. I'm sorry, this is the only Algebra 2 class that I've ranted at because uh, you're right after my Algebra class and, and we have a lot of stuff to work out. Um, but the, the, the issues come back to that. It's like been avoiding the understanding too long and it's catching up to you. Um, So, yes, something that we could do is set each of these factors equal to zero. Absolutely, uh, it is going to help us find some points on the graph. By the way, what is a point on a graph? What is a point on a graph? There's one, what is that? Okay, a point is defined by an x and a y coordinate uh, in this context. We could have some point in some other context and it could mean something else. But in this context, it means it has an x and it has a y. It's an x and it has a y. Okay. <coughs> so now we have to figure out, well, this is just a random point. Does this point have anything to do with this equation? How do we decide if this point has anything to do with this equation?
If you plug in this x in there and it comes out to be that y, that is precisely why this point might have anything to do with this equation. Right? If it doesn't come out to be this y, then it doesn't have anything to do with this equation other than, well, what do we call it? If we plug in this x and we do get this y in this equation, what do we call this point? Does it, what this point represents? This point, defined by its x and its y, represents a solution. Is the point a solution? Now we're getting really heady here. We're going like four or three here. Is the point a solution? Or would it be better or more accurate to say that the point's not a solution, but the point represents a solution? Yeah. Okay. It represents a solution. Because what's a point? A point is just like a, as small a dot as I could possibly draw. That's really what a point is. Uh, a point is actually this thing, if you read an uh, old, old geometry book called The Elements, written by Euclid. Uh, a point is that which has no breadth and no length. Like a point is actually a thing that's not there. It's a point in space that you just kind of think about. It's, it's there. But I can't, I, if I were to, to represent it with any stuff, that's much bigger than what a point actually is. This point is just a, an imaginary spot in space. That if, I, if I put this dot here, really like, how big is a dot? It's measurable. If, if, I, if I look down on the x-axis and I say, oh, that's 3, about that, only one infinitesimally thin sliver of this is three. And this point right here covers a lot more than that sliver. You see what I'm saying? Really, really technically and, and like obsessively kind of verging on mental illness here. Right? We do have to represent it with something. And so we do draw a, a dot on a, on a graph. Um, but really that point it's just, a, it's just a dot, and that dot, by where it's located, represents two numbers, this one and this one. If you plug this number into the equation that you're talking about, and you get this number out, it's, well, that's the solution, right? It represents those two numbers, and those two numbers together are the solution. You see what I'm saying? Okay, I don't expect everything that we do to be that ugh, heavy and, and labored. I do want you to think of it more than steps, right? So, um, so you just talk about what a graph is. A graph is um, it's a bunch of points, right? Really, when we draw these shapes here, these are not these shapes. They are actually just a bunch of points, right? It's kind of like you. Are you really this thing? What? Yeah. <laughs> well, that's, even, that's maybe even a little bit too too out there, right, to say what, what are you? That's a hard question. Okay, so let's just talk about your body. Is your body just like this? Is it a hand? And, and, and arms and legs and stuff? Yeah. All that stuff, but what's your hand made of? Well, your hand's made of skin and muscles and tendons and bones. But what are your skin and muscles and tendons and bones made of? Water. Cells. What? Water. Cells and water? What are those cells made of? DNA. DNA, what's that DNA made of? Molecules. Mole what are those molecules made of? Atoms. More DNA. <laughs> atoms. Why are we doing this? Molecules made of atoms? What's in an atom? Nothing. Oh. 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 Space. Smaller atoms. This is a thing called molecules. Oh. Like, takes you hey. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Jesus. You got atoms, you got quarks, and like, who knows what's inside of them? Stuff inside of quarks. Like, Quark? the Negative point is, charges. the point yeah. is, this <laughs> thing, it's not just a curvy thing actually a bunch of points. It's a bunch of little dots. A bunch of little dots. And what are all those dots? Let's call them solutions, solutions. right? Let's, let's not be too obsessive. Let's call them solutions, all right? They're, they're points, and they have an x and a y, and that x and that y should work, should make this equation true, right? So when we go to find these x-intercepts, what are we doing? We're just finding low-hanging fruit, really. What's low-hanging fruit? <laughs> Anybody know what low hanging fruit means? <laughs> it's easy to get. It's easy to get. Really? Yeah. Was I right? 
Ruth, it's easy to get. What's easier to get? To stand on the ground and, and pick up a and pick an apple off a tree, or to climb the tree and get something from way up top. Where are you? There you are. Right. If you're at an apple tree, there's apples that hang down like right in front of your face. You can pick that, or there's the stuff that's way up there. X intercepts are just low hanging fruit. And the writer of this problem could not have made this fruit any lower than this. You don't even have to factor this polynomial, it's factored, right? Perfect. So by doing this, by setting this equal to zero, well, to do that, I, I have to kind of make a, a kind of a big assumption. The assumption that I set this equal to zero. Until we set that equal to zero, we can't really set these equal to zero. Why do we have to set, have this equal to zero? And if this is equal to zero, why does it mean that this would have to be equal to zero? Let's just answer that last question. Set it equal to zero, why does that mean that this has to be equal to zero, and that this has to be equal to zero, and that this has to be equal to zero? Why would that have to be? The only thing we're doing to, to get this number is multiplying numbers together, right? It's like the only operation involved. We can look at it that way at least. We got three numbers here, really four. We got two numbers here, two numbers multiplied together here, times another number, times another number, and we got zero. The only way to multiply and get zero is to multiply by zero, okay? Um, that's why we set each of these equal to zero. Set it equal to zero, solve for x. Set it equal to zero, one equals zero, solve for x. Set this equal to zero, solve for x. So these three x's, what, can you finish that sentence? You could be finished a lot of ways. These three x's are solutions to the equation when it's equal to zero. Right? So if uh, this is your x, you know that y is going to be zero. If this is your x, you know also y is going to be equal to zero, likewise. And since this graph is just a way to represent those solutions, we can draw the graph. Right here, all along here, where we may have a, a range of x values, but the y value is zero. y is going to be zero. So at three, y will be zero. At one, y will be zero. At negative one, y will be zero. Who learned something new? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the graph, the graph <laughs> picture of all the solutions, how does it do that? It's just a bunch of points, all those points have an x and a y, and that x and that y of that point should work in that equation. <laughs> We're trying to draw a graph. A graph is just a bunch of points, a bunch of points that the x and the y at that point solve this equation. So how do we find other points, other things that represent solutions? You make a chart. Okay, why are we making a chart? To find other coordinates. Other coordinates, other, which other represent? Solutions. Solutions, these coordinates re re represent solutions. So how can I find a solution that represents a, a, a coordinate that represents the solution. Right. How do I find that? Um, you choose numbers. Choose numbers for? On the x-axis. Yeah. Choose numbers to plug in for x? Yeah. Could I choose numbers for y? No. Yes. It'd be really hard. Why would you ever do that? No. Because <laughs> you're going to get tired of it being so easy. Nope. Uh, Okay, so I can just choose any x that I want? Yeah. yeah. Yes, 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 yes. If you yes. want it close. It would make sense, since we already have this information, let's not, you know, do the same thing. Well, let's not pick negative one, one, or three, because we know what's going to happen when yeah. we do that, right? Mm -hmm. We're just trying to get an idea for this graph. If we really want to draw an accurate graph, we need to find all of the points that are solutions. So we need to find... Uh, Zero. 
We need to find zero, we also need to find a negative half, we need to find negative two quarters, we need to find a negative quarter, we need to find negative point nine 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 nine, we need to find negative point zero one. Do you see what I'm saying? If we want to draw an incredibly accurate graph, that's what we have to do. Now, is that reasonable? No. No, we just we're gonna get a pretty good idea. Okay. Do negative so two, zero. Negative two, two four. Negative two, zero, two, two and four. And four. So those are four points, four x values that I can plug in and find a y value, and it's going to give me more information. It's actually these x-intercepts along with these points are going to give me quite a bit of uh, data that I feel comfortable connecting those with a curve, and that curve is probably pretty close to what I would get if I plugged in all possible x values and found all the possible y values. Okay? That's what the real graph is. Plug in all the x's, find all the y's. But our graph will be pretty. Um, so we plug in negative 2. What does that mean? Plug in negative 2 for x? Just put, just put negative 2 there, and there, and there. We'll find all together. Yeah. What do you get for negative 2? 15. 15. Plug in 0, we get what? 3. 3. Negative 9. 2, negative 9. 4. 75. 75. Zero, 3, 2, negative 9, 4, 75. Well, that's off the charts. I'm not going to even try to graph that. But what does it tell me? It tells me that it, 4 is going to be 75, 5 is going to be higher than that, 6 is going to be going to give me a bigger y than that, 7 is going to give me a bigger It's just going to keep going. It's going to keep on going. So we can connect all these points from left to right. Even saying left to right kills me, it's a step. Right? Why would I tell you to connect those points from left to right? <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> Reason is, Something about Enzo. you could make some mistakes if you, if you don't move from left to right. Okay, here's a possible wrong graph that we could draw. Uh, let's see. Okay, that went through all the points. Yes? We went through all the points. It has all the right points that we found. What? I thought you were saying left to right rather than right to left. If you're going like oh. right, left, right. I mean left to right as opposed to whatever. Oh, well, actually, you know what, that, 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 that even can't be right because it goes through the x-axis again, so we'll just go like this and go like that. Now that's, that's better. Uh, if I don't know anything else about graphs or functions or any of that stuff, I mean, really, tell me why that can't be right. Not because your calculator tells you, not because it looks different than other graphs that you've drawn. Why could that not be correct? Is there an answer to this question? Because there's more than one point. I'm just wondering. Okay. There's more than one point on the Y. What do you mean by that? Well, because there's usually only one point on the Y. One point on the Y. Like directly on the Y. <laughs> so, if, if you mind if I reword that? Yeah. So you go to some X. Yeah. And then you go to look, say, you want to find the Y, right? Only an X with a Y is a solution. And the, the points represent the solutions with their coordinates, right? So x of negative half, right? So I want to know what the y is that works with negative half for x. Is it this y? Is it this y? Or is it this y? It's probably none of those. Right. Because right? this is what we call a, what, what does that violate? We've got three different y's. This can't have three different y's for one x because this is a second degree. No, this would be a fourth degree. What? Why? 
to know what degree it is, we have to multiply it all out and see what the highest power of x is. If you multiply those four factors out, you can get an x to the fourth, and you'll have a fourth degree. What kind of a thing can you not have multiple y's for one given x? Oh! More specifically. Huh? What? A function. A function only has one output for every input, right? One y for every x. Okay? This clearly has more than one y for any, if any x has more than one y, it's not a function. We've been calling these polynomial functions ever since we first learned about them. Function is actually a word that means something, okay? For any x that you put in there, you're only gonna get one y out, right? Because it's really, think about it, it's gonna be these numbers multiplied together, multiply three numbers together, the only one number you can get, you can't get multiple numbers, you can't get multiple outputs. So that's not a function. But if we go from left to right, we kind of ensure that we won't cross back over ourselves and go from right to left and therefore get two outputs. That's why I tell you to go from left to right, not because that's just how graphs work, but it is a necessary, it's a necessary conclusion we have to come to if we're graphing a function. If we're graphing a function, we should be able to go, do it from, from left to right and never have to go back from right to left. But only because for every input, there should only be one I drew that conclusion, I gave you that shortcut. Right? But it'd be a lot better if you say, it would only make sense if I try to connect it some other way, I'm gonna have not a function, and this is a function. And I know what functions are, I know what that means, and I don't wanna violate that. Right? Um, that's a terrible graph. I'm gonna fix it. I have a piece of mind. Like that. Okay. What does the real accurate graph look like? Probably different from this. It might just come down, and this might be the very bottom. Uh, it may come down like I have. Um, can't be for sure. I'm making guesses here. I do know that the next point is 475, which is really high up there, which makes this really steep, which I kind of want to, if I came down here and made this my minimum, then I'd have to really sweep over here to make it very steep, so if I go past it, and then start coming back up over here, that makes it necessarily steep, and so that makes it probably more like what it looks like. It's just, those are my conclusions, right? based on the things that I know. Not because I know I'm right, just because it's reasonable. Okay. Um, I know that I sound like this idealistic, or I don't know what I sound like exactly, actually. I said I know I don't sound like something that I actually, I don't know exactly what I sound like to you. But I probably don't sound like this guy who made it really easy for you to graph this graph. Okay. Um, hopefully, something new was learned. You learn one new thing. Because if all we ever do is just repeat things that we already know, which is what a lot of students want to do, it's, that life stinks. Okay. Just repeat all the stuff that you that's very boring. Um, so I hope that just one new piece of information, even though you got the right graph, now you know a little bit more about it. Okay? Like learning more about the context of a painting. You've seen a painting a hundred times, but then you learn uh, when this guy was painting it, he was very sad. That makes it more interesting. And so if you learn something new about this graph, what a graph is, what a function is, what is, what a solution is, what a point is, what an atom is, what a quark is. So then just made it a little more interesting. Um, all right. So there's all that. It had the potential. And also, what I wanted to say is that I, I'm really only drawing on things that we actually defined and learned about a long time ago. Solutions, old, really old stuff. This is pre-algebra stuff, solutions, right? We never really took the time to think about it if we didn't know what a solution was. Uh, solutions with, with two variables, algebra two, or uh, sorry, algebra one, right? Not pre-algebra so much. We got two variables there, okay, so we started learning about functions and solutions to equations with two variables in, in algebra. Uh, 
X intercepts, also an algebra concept. Um, factory polynomials, really late algebra one day, probably just algebra two, factory polynomials. Um, but it was a while ago. Our first polynomial that we factored was a quadratic, and it was way back in chapter four, pretty early on. I am drawing on things that, that you have the potential to already understand. And how much easier would it be right now if when I said solution, the correct definition of solution popped in your head, and I said function, the correct definition of function popped in your head, and I said graph, and the correct definition of graph popped up in your head, and I said x-intercept, and the correct definition of x-intercept popped up in your head, how much easier would it be for you right now if all that stuff you had done already? You did a bunch of steps back then. Step, 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 step. And now I'm challenging you to, to gather up all that knowledge, sweep it up into one place, and, and chew on it, understand it. Um, all right, so there it is. There's a graphing example. We've gone into lots of detail about it, uh, but no more detail than you potentially could have had in your head already. Are there questions from other problems? Other problems that you're not sure how 14. Is that an error? Error finding? Mm -hmm. finding an error? Okay, let's look at this one. Um, this is something that, uh, look, for number 14, if you just start from scratch and you graph your graph, their graph is not going to look like your graph. Your graph will be right and theirs will be wrong and you can say, well, it's, I don't know exactly what they did wrong, but they definitely got the wrong graph. Okay, and if they ever ask me, I would show them how to do it correctly. All right. Now, what the book writers are trying to get you to see is that there's this shortcut that they're misusing. And they're misusing this shortcut. All right? So here's the shortcut. How many factors do we have up here? How many factors does the polynomial have? It's a trick question. Sort of. This polynomial right here. Four. Four. Yes, good. The trick question was this is two factors. Right? So it's got four factors. Okay? But two of them are identical. Right? And there's the short, there's where the shortcut lies. Okay? We've got two factors that are the same. We've got an x plus one and an x plus one. They're both the same. What x intercept do we get out of that x plus one factor? Negative one, zero. What do you notice about that x-intercept that's different from other x-intercepts? What's different about this x-intercept than these x-intercepts? Okay, it is negative. I can't deny that. How does the graph interact with that x-intercept as opposed to these? It turns around. It turns around. Yeah. And if you didn't notice that, it's fine. That's a really, I, mean, I sometimes I ask really broad questions. It's hard to know what the answer is that I'm looking for. It turns around. It does not go through the x, inter, or the x axis at that x intercept, right? Does it intercept the x axis? Does it, does it touch the x axis? Yeah. Yes, but it never goes through it. To go through it would mean it goes from positive to negative. And it doesn't do that. It is positive almost all the time, except for when it's zero, but then it just goes back to so that is, it didn't happen because there's a repeat factor, but it's like a necessary conclusion. That will always happen with repeated factors if you have an even number of repeated factors. Okay. An even number of repeated factors, when you find the x-intercept that goes with, with all those factors, all the repeated factors, if it's an even number of repeated factors, like this one is, it's repeated twice, it will just touch the x-axis and go back. If it's odd, if it has an odd number of factors, of repeated factors, right? If it was x plus one times x plus one times x plus one, three of them, three of those factors, then it will go through that x-axis. Okay. So let's let's look at number 14 and see what's going on.
okay? So we want to find our x-intercepts, right? And just to save ourselves some time, we know ultimately what we're going to do is set x equal to 0 and x minus 3, let's say even cubed equal to 0. Well, obviously x equals 0. And let's save ourselves a couple seconds and realize, of course, that x will have to be 3. x would have to be 3 for that to be 0. Well, they have that right there. They have those, those x-intercepts aren't correct. Right. But based on what I just told you, what should the, the graph do at this x-intercept? Well, that was for when we have an even number of repeated factors. But it's raised to an even power. But it's raised to an odd power. And what I, what I said a minute ago was if you raise that repeated factor, if a, a factor is raised to an odd power, it should go through that x-intercept. Okay? Go through that x-intercept. Um, so maybe what they did, and this is just a maybe because it's just not enough information. Even if you did assume that you're supposed to turn around and not go through this x-intercept, that's not enough. Okay, that's all I know. Um, so maybe they also plugged in one. Maybe that's what they did. So they got one times negative eight. No, that's not what they did. Um, They are trying to use, utilize that shortcut. They're doing it incorrectly. Okay. But if we were to do this work, we would say, uh, let's plot some points. Okay, we got the x-intercept. Let's plot some points. And let's make sure the f-a here is correct. We could plot some points where at 1, at uh, 4, and at negative 1. Negative one, uh, that's going to be ooh, quite large. Negative one times negative uh, 64. So 64. One, negative one comma 64. One is going to be negative eight. Four. Four. Maybe that's what they did. Maybe they did, it looks like they had four, four. So they did something like this. Uh, well, I gotta go through there. I know I'm gonna have to just touch that and I'll come back down here. I'll just touch it and come up. Uh, I know I gotta come back down here, so I'm just kind of gonna bring it up here and then come down. And I know I'm gonna have to go through that x-intercept because there's an odd number of factors of x, and I'll just go on through it. It doesn't come back because there's no more x-intercepts. Maybe that was the reason. Okay, that's no good though. We know that that's not correct. We do get four, four, uh, one, negative eight. Uh, Bend this down. Two, three, four, five, six. I know we've got to come through here, through there, and go through that point. Um, and negative 164, that's just ridiculous. It's just going to be really, really quick, really steep. Maybe it does go a curve over a little bit, go like that. Nobody can tell me it does. Yes, question. You said something about the end behavior, right? It will, if we multiply it out, then the highest power of x will be fourth power. Does that make sense to everybody? If we were to multiply out, because we're, we're asking a question about end behavior, if you want to know about end behavior, we're going to have a really good, concise, well, maybe not concise, but a really good, thorough explanation of why the end behavior is the way it is based on degree and leading coefficient. Go back to 4.5.2, 5.2, I think. 
Go back to 5.2, watch that video, watch the, the lecture videos, or watch the regular tutorial style videos, and I explain exactly why the end angle is this way. But if we have an even degree and a positive leading coefficient, both ends, the right end and the left end, will both together point up. Okay? A big number for x, we get out big positive numbers for y. If we put in a big negative number for x, we get out big positive numbers for y. Um, so does it make sense that if we were to multiply all this out, the highest power of x would be 4. Can someone explain why that makes sense? Why if we were to multiply all of that stuff out, the highest power of x would be 4. I don't, can't really say what all the other stuff is. There would definitely be other stuff. But why is it? Why is that? Because you have the x raised to the third, so that's 3x's, and then times another x makes it 4. Right. We have three factors here. x minus 3 times x minus 3 times x minus 3. If you're going to multiply three factors together, each of them has an x, you know at some point you're going to have to get an x times an x, and then that x squared has to get multiplied by another x, and then x to the third has to get multiplied by this x. So in the end, the highest power of x would be x to the fourth. You'll have an x to the third and an x squared and an x and a constant. I don't know what they are, but the only question we're asking is about n behavior and nothing else really matters. Talk real quick about this guy. It wants us to name the turning points. It's where it turns around, turns from going up to down, or from down to up. Or if you want to use a math word, it goes from increasing to decreasing, or it goes from decreasing to increasing. Those are our turning points. Okay. Let's mark the coordinates. That's what it's asking us to do first. What's the coordinates of this this turning point? Negative 0.5. Negative 0.5. And what? Negative 2.5. Negative. Two point, uh, maybe four. It looks like less than sure. Oh, why not? Uh, how about this other one? Uh, 1.5-ish. Maybe 5.6. Okay. Sounds reasonable to me. Okay. Now, these are both turning points, but they're different kinds of turning points. What's this one called? A maximum. Is it the maximum? The local maximum. Because here's things that are bigger than that. These y values are bigger than this y value. So they're more maximum, but this one in its local area, just right here where it peaks, is the max. And here we have also a local minimum. Local minimum. Does this function have an absolute maximum? Does it have an absolute minimum? No. Yeah. Right? For there to be a minimum, we have to keep chasing this guy down and find the smallest, the, the most negative value, but it just never stops going down. Likewise, this one never stops going down. Uh, so, now you put your homeworks together, I'm going to collect them, and we'll sort of pass out the review package. Yeah.